as much as it is a passage from non-existence to existence. But it goes without saying, however, that from another point of view, from a complementary, from a complementary uh, point of view, um, it could be said that creation is a transition from good to evil, since it is the passage from the reality of entities in God's knowledge and their unity within the unity of the good to the world of multiplicity and composition that necessarily involves oppositions and therefore evil. It means, among other things, that the principle of the goodness of creatures is God as the good, whereas the source of their evil or potential evil lies in God's knowledge of them without being identifiable with God qua good. The source of evil is in God without being God. Existence as existence is only good, I repeat, since it proceeds from the unmixed good. And therefore, existence as existence are clearly exempt from evil. However, existence, in as much as they are immutable entities or essence, are gazed upon by non-existence and therefore by evil. This is in fact, this sounds perhaps very complicated, but it is just another way of saying that possible entities are not necessary, but precisely only possible. They are possible, they are not necessary, which means that only God is necessary being. Only God is pure being without any touch of non-existence. Only God is pure necessity. Now, the manifestation of evil in existence cannot be denied, of course, but it not only refers to it as accidental because it results from the non-necessity of existence, of existent beings. Or in other words, the fact that creatures are both non-existent as immutable entities and existent as created beings amounts to a possible disjunction between essence and existence that clearly differentiates creatures from God, in whom essence is none other than necessity. God is the being that cannot but be. Any other being cannot be. This distinction makes it possible for existence not to be fully themselves by failing to align themselves with or to participate in the existentiating good that projected them into existence. Evil cannot be avoided in the world in as much as it results from the gaze of non-existence upon immutable entities. That is their fundamental relativity. But it can be overcome and neutralized by placing oneself under the shield of the good, under the shield of God, the most radical way of which is to recognize the exclusive and inclusive sole reality of the good. In other words, the only evil cannot but be, but at the same time we have the means to overcome it, to transcend it by identifying <coughs> with the good and being shielded by the good. In the world of creation and nature, evil manifests itself on the other side of the mirror, as it were, as the consequence of diversity and composition that necessarily produces difference, conflicts, uh, and of course also corruption. So even though nature is essentially good as existentiation, existentiation of the good, or by the good, it is also the domain of evil because it pertains to accidentality, non-necessity, and composition. There is therefore, and that's an important consequence, a sort of gradation of reality or existence that may be sketched as follows. As Ari and Fabita, as permanent uh, entities, uh, existent in God's knowledge, entities are fully real and they are, in fact, essentially identifiable with the real as such, al -haq. That's the highest degree of reality. When considered from the point of view of their non-existence in creation, Ari and Fabita, in God's knowledge, are relative to creation 
and take on, as it were, a relative aspect from within God's knowledge itself. In other words, they stand for relativity in absoluteness. There is a relativity already in absoluteness. The seed of relativity are to be found in absoluteness. Considered as Aryan Larjuda, that is as entities who are, which are manifest, existentiated, entities exist in creation and are direct manifestations, as it were, of the goodness of the real, since they flow from it. Finally, still considered as Aryan Larjuda, as existential realities, they are also, in a certain sense, non-existent in God, and that is precisely the aspect of pure accidents and potential evil. The limit of this accidents of entities is impossibility or nothingness, but that is a limit that is obviously never reached. Uh, it is only the ontological logic, if I may say so, of accidents and evil. Which means, in other words, that there is no such thing as pure evil. Evil is just a tendency. Pure evil is never rich. Nothingness is never rich. It is the horizon of being, so to speak, that is never rich. I have so far tried to describe the metaphysical layout of evil. But what is the share of human responsibility in the abuse of moral evil? In order to answer this question, one has to distinguish, for Ibn Arabi, between two levels of the divine will. The first is the existentiating will that we've already identified as a source of good, which in Arabic refers to as al am al taqwim or the order to be, God order things to be. That's the first level. We feel the context of the creation resulting from this existentiating good or order. There appears a second order, which is the legal order of God. Al Amr al Taqlid, the law, the law prescribed by God. This legal order aims at coordinating and harmonizing the human will in connection with the world of relativity. It stands from divine wisdom as a guidance to mankind. It is therefore through it that human evil appears as free disobedience to the law. I quote uh, in Arabic. Nothing determines opposition except the prescription of the law. Evil is disobedience to the law in that sense. And therefore it is incapacity to reach happiness and the fulfillment of the human destiny. Switching back to a metaphysical point of view, and we found in the list um, um, we found in the list um, and limiting the human freedom in its immediate exercise. This disobedience and evil is predetermined in God as the name of misguidance, al mubil al mubil the misguider, is the centrifugal and distracting dimension of the existential in order that causes humans to go astray. It must be added, however, that this attribute of rigor, the misguider, participates essentially in mercy, since it ultimately aims at the return to the one. It is nothing else in this sense than a kind of humanly painful detour toward felicity. So even misguidance participates in the economy of mercy. It is just a metaphysical detour, as it were. Following this very brief and um, a sketch of the Arabi's position on, 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 on the problem of, um, of, of, of manifestation and evil, uh, I would like to say that Jewish mysticism in the Kabbalah shares with Islamic mysticism the seemingly contradictory double postulation that God is the unmixed of good and that he is in a mysterious way also the source of evil. This double postulation is founded on an unambiguous biblical statement, such as Isaiah 45, 7, where we read, I, the divine I, form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things, and of forth. So this is the first aspect. God as creator of evil. 
But on the other hand, we also have the narrative of the human transgression in Eden. That is the human responsibility in evil. In evil. So the first point clearly assigns a divine origin to evil, whereas the second seems to exempt the divinity from the responsibility of the latter, since it attributes it to man, mankind. On the whole, it can be said that Kabbalah has tended to deal with the matter in two seemingly opposite general ways. That is, evil as a necessary result of the process of emanation from the one, in other words, evil results from emanation from the one, a process that necessarily separates creation from the good and by making it different from it, or else as an erroneous and transgressive reading and experience of the outcome of this process, and that's when human responsibility comes into play. By and large, it seems safe to say that Kabbalah has been more focused than Sufism on the aspect of ontological reality of evil, without, however, most 